Sometimes, when you look at the moon, you see a face smiling down at you from the moon's surface. Of course, this is an illusion, but many people see it, and that's because its surface is shaped by some sort of lunar seas and highlands. From our point of view, we see these as light and dark patches. These seas are dark parts, and large hardened lava plains formed because of volcanic eruptions that happened a long, long time ago. The light regions are actually the mountains and the highlands. And people all around the globe see these lunar patches as a smiling face or even some other shapes. Our brain tends to play with things of this nature, and that's a phenomenon called pareidolia. It's when you see familiar faces and shapes, even though they're not actually there, similar to how you can see a face in a slice of toast or shapes while watching the clouds. And in the northern hemisphere, people see a face in those different lunar seas. The eyes are the sea of serenity and rain, the sea of clouds represents his mouth, while the seas of islands and vapors form his nose. But that's just one way to interpret this picture, and that mostly works in the northern hemisphere. If you live in the southern hemisphere, you see in the moon the other way up. When they look at the moon, some see a person that looks like they're carrying a bundle of sticks. Or there's the shape of a woman. She wears her hair up and it has two jewels in it, and they see the left side of her face in profile. One of the craters is reminiscent of a shining diamond which, it seems, she's wearing around her neck. In some places, people may see the shape of a rabbit, whereas people from the Pacific Northwest in America even have a story about the toad they see when looking at the moon. The story says there was a wolf that fell in love with a toad, and the toad didn't quite trust the wolf since it wanted to escape and didn't know where. It simply made one huge leap and landed on the moon. Now, do other planets have beautiful rainbows like we do? The ingredients for that are raindrops and sunlight. At the moment, we don't know of a planet with liquid water on its surface, and none have enough water in their atmosphere to make it rain. But droplets of some other liquid could refract light coming from the sun and spread it out into various colors. Titan is one of Saturn's moons, and the atmosphere there is rich in droplets of liquid methane, which probably form rain. The atmosphere on Titan is very hazy. That means that direct sunlight is not that common, but there's still a slight chance we could catch methane rainbows someday. If they really exist, they'd be similar to rainbows on Earth, but they'd be a bit broader because methane refracts light differently than water. There's a similar thing on Venus called glory. Scientists caught pictures of this optical phenomenon of sunlight falling on sulfuric acid droplets, similar to a rainbow. Jupiter is insanely big, around 11 times wider than Earth. Not only that, our planet is twice as small as its great red spot, the raging storm that's been present on the planet for more than a century. Now, we owe Jupiter a lot. Its radiation is a thousand times stronger than the lethal level for us. And the gravitational force is so powerful that it actually protects our planet from collisions. In some other planetary systems, giant planets like Jupiter can move around and migrate from the place where they were originally formed. They spiral inward and get closer to their stars. When they move around, they can cause a lot of trouble. When they get closer to their stars, they can swallow and destroy some innocent small planets or other celestial bodies that stand in their way. But if these giants remain far away from their stars, they serve as guardians of the planetary system. They protect the planets in the inner orbits and allow them to circle around a central star. Jupiter got the nickname vacuum cleaner of the solar system because it can eat up any comet or asteroid that comes close enough. It can also change their orbits and kick them out so they can't come back for a very, very long time. That way, Jupiter protects the inner planets, although sometimes it accidentally sends asteroids or comets into them, causing collisions like maybe the one that made the dinosaurs extinct 65 million years ago. Now, Saturn's rings are the most famous ones in our solar system. They are far-reaching, colorful, and highly visible. You can even see them using a backyard telescope. But some other ice and gas giants also have them too, like Uranus. It has the second most interesting set of rings in our solar system. There are 13 rings, and they're all made of very dark particles that are different sizes. They're most likely young, way younger than Uranus itself. 
when theory says high-speed impacts shattered one or more moons, and this may have been the matter these rings are formed of. There were way more particles of debris, but only some survived, and today are forming stable zones around Uranus, known as rings. Now, our planet lost 60% of its atmosphere when there was an asteroid impact that, as one theory says, probably created the moon. The collision between Earth and a Mars-sized rock happened over 4 billion years ago. The debris from all that collected in an orbit around our planet eventually formed the moon. Now, Venus is home to at least 37 volcanoes that were active recently, which is the first evidence that showed its interior is still geologically active. Previous research discovered that the planet's interior was warm, plus there were ring-like structures. Plumes of extremely hot material deep inside Venus rise through the mantle layer, and that's how these structures form. It's like how plumes form the volcanic areas of the Hawaiian Islands. But scientists think they were just a result of some ancient activities. They believe Venus has cooled enough and drastically slowed down geological activities in its interior by hardening the crust so much that all of the warm materials from deep inside can't get out to the surface. Speaking of volcanic eruptions, Jupiter's moon Io also has them. Our moon is pretty peaceful, but Io has hundreds of volcanoes, and it took the title of the most active moon in our solar system when it comes to volcanoes. If you could go there, you'd see plumes of sulfur that reach up to 190 miles into its atmosphere. Volcanoes there emit one ton of particles and gases into space near Jupiter, its parent planet, every second. This could be because Jupiter's strong magnetic field and gravitational force, Io's interior tenses up and relaxes as it orbits Jupiter and gets closer to it and farther away from it, which generates huge amounts of energy, enough for volcanic activity. There are billions of comets in our solar system. Most of them are in the Oort cloud and the Kuiper belt. A comet generally consists of rock and ice, at least until it gets closer to the sun. Then its exterior turns into a cloud of dust and gas. And that's why comets have their specific tails. Pluto's unique surface is a series of domes, peaks, and troughs on the planet's landscape, which may have been formed because of its many large ice volcanoes. Neither erosion nor some other geological activity has done that much, but its ice volcanoes actually push icy material up to the surface. There are also a couple of craters in this area of the hemisphere called New Horizons. Asteroid impacts probably caused these. Plus, these craters aren't that geologically old. Also, the interior of Pluto probably retained heat, which enabled matter rich in water and ice to deposit onto the surface. And those specific structures I mentioned before could have formed because the water was rising up from the interior of the planet and ended up being rapidly frozen because temperatures on Pluto are extremely low, in addition to atmospheric pressures. Uranus is the second least dense planet in our solar system. The least dense one is Saturn. Now, even though Saturn is 14 and a half times as massive as our planet, it's still less dense than water. This means that Saturn would float in a pool if it was more than 37,000 miles wide, so the planet would have enough space to even be in there. Whoa, that's a big pool. Now back to Uranus. Since its density level is so low, you probably experience less than 90% of its gravity, assuming you could even set foot on its cloud tops. Now Mars has pretty crazy dust storms, the biggest ones in our solar system, actually. They can blanket the whole planet and last for months. One theory says these huge storms start because dust particles absorb sunlight and warm the atmosphere of the red planet. Warm pockets of air form, and they start flowing toward colder areas. This generates winds. These powerful winds lift more and more dust off the ground. This again heats the planet's atmosphere, creates more wind, and kicks up even more dust. Wow, better have a broom handy. Maybe even two. <laughs>